Hi. Good morning. On the way to Dana's house this morning, going to meet up with Dana and John and possibly Reggie, but we don't know. We are going to go and have a nice little ride today. It looks like a nice sunny day. We are on the way to Cedar Island, North Carolina, out on the uh, Crystal Coast. It's the farthest you can go without jumping on a ferry. And uh, should be a good day. Of course, this morning when I left, I forgot to buckle my helmet. So I had to stop and buckle my helmet real quick because my strap was flopping and hitting me in the side of the helmet. I think I got everything. I think. Hope I didn't forget nothing. But we shall see. And I hope it doesn't rain on us because it's calling for some rain. But it's not supposed to hit until this evening. And since we're going east, uh, it should be good. Maybe a little cloudy. But I hope that we don't get wet on the way home. So I think it's... Uh, about 190 or 200 miles from here out to Cedar Island not exactly sure but something like that and uh, we should get there in about uh, three hours but unfortunately uh, Dana uh, likes to stop a lot even though he's got a touring bike but we'll try to minimize that it's not going to be a very exciting ride today because it's uh, kind of just smooth and rolling backcountry roads. So no hills, no twisties, unfortunately. We were supposed to go to uh, Virginia and ride some twisty roads and have some fun in the mountains. But I don't think that's going to happen because they're calling for a 90% chance of rain in the mountains today. So our trip to the mountains got canceled and we switched it to the beach instead uh, I don't prefer the beach I prefer the mountains and I was gonna ride my XSR 900 uh, and this is the first day I have a microphone thank goodness finally ordered the purple panda off Amazon and got it hooked up I had a little uh, trouble with it yesterday I couldn't figure out why it wasn't working uh, but dummy me uh, didn't snap the plug-in all the way uh, when I plugged it in it stopped and I thought it bottomed out, but there was a little gap uh, in the two connectors. I thought that was normal, but odd looking. And I come to find out, you just have to press really hard and it fits together just fine. And then uh, and you can record audio. So it took me a little while to figure that out. I know that sounds stupid, but it took me a little while to figure it out. But I finally got it working. So today I'm on my 2018 Kawasaki Vulcan S650, which, uh, by the way, I love this bike, and I'll talk about it more a little bit later. But uh, it's got 2,600 miles on it, just turned 2601. I've had it since August, and this motorcycle actually came in white, but I don't like white motorcycles. But <clears throat> this motorcycle was a leftover new, and I got a killer deal on it. The catch was, uh, I could only pick from what they had. And they had three 2018 Vulcan S's all in white, all the same. So I had no choice. I could have bought the 2019, which is what I actually wanted, which is that uh, green, it's like a army camo green, like a matte green. Uh, I really like the color on that one and I really wanted that one, but they weren't gonna negotiate too much on it. So, then this place, this other motorcycle dealer had these leftover new ones and I didn't know he had them, but I almost had a pretty decent price worked out on the 2019, the green one. And uh, then he said, I, uh, but I got another bike that you might be interested in. And I said, what's that? And he said, well, I got three 2018s left over and I can make a heck of a deal on those. And I said, well, what kind of deal? And he gave me a number that I just couldn't say no to. And in fact, uh, just to back up a little bit, I was actually looking for a used one. Uh, and I went test drove a couple of them. And I liked them. But they, uh, they were asking uh, not too much under what I could get a brand new one for. Like the 2019. And 
I was like, uh, okay, well, I might as well go with you. For a few hundred dollars more, I can get a brand new one, not a used one. And then they gave me the offer on this uh, leftover new 2018. Uh, and it actually ended up being cheaper than the used ones. So that's a no-brainer. And uh, it wasn't uh, like a small amount less. It was considerably less than the used ones out on the market. So I went with the brand new one. Unfortunately, it was white, and I don't like white motorcycles. I'm just not a fan. Some people like them, I don't. I think it looks okay, but it's not for me. So, as you can tell, I'm riding a green 2018 Kawasaki Vulcan S. Uh, that's because this bike is plastic dipped. Now, I was a little skeptical on the plastic dip. I thought it was gonna look like crap and kind of rubbery. And kind of the texture would be ugly. But believe it or not, it turned out really good. Uh, much, much better than I expected. All out of, out of an aerosol can. So I'm very, very pleased with it. I made a couple little mistakes on it where it could use correction, but it was my first time using plastic dip. And uh, overall, I think it turned out great. And unless you really looked around, you probably wouldn't be able to see my mistakes. But <clears throat> they're there. And I might point them out later, or I might not. I don't know. But uh, anyway, be but before I plastic dipped, I actually looked at repainting the bike, like a professional paint job. And it would only involve three pieces, the front fender, the tank, and the rear fender. And I started calling around to see what people were uh, repaint the bike for and it was anywhere from eight hundred to twelve hundred dollars depending on who you talk to well the bike was let's just say very cheap and this was gonna be about a quarter of the price of the bike and I was not about to spend 25% of the original cost of the bike just to change the color I mean I don't like white but I don't hate it that much to spend that kind of money so I said well I guess I'll just live with a white motorcycle and then I looked at vinyl wrapping, and I thought about vinyl wrapping, and I never actually called around. And then I came across this plastic dip, and they said you can just peel it off if you don't like it, and it doesn't hurt the paint. And I said, well, let me get a couple cans of it and see what it's all about. So I did, and I said, well, worst case scenario, I'm out some time, some effort, and about 40 bucks. So for $40, I gotta say, this thing turned out really good. I'm uh, very surprised. This was not my expectation. And I also got a glossifier, which makes the paint or the plastic dip look like gloss paint. But uh, uh, for some reason, I actually like this uh, matte color because if you don't spray the, spray the uh, glossifier on it, it just stays matte like this. And I actually like it. Uh, I thought about trying uh, the glossifier and one of the trim pieces on the side, which I'll show you later, but I painted those too. And um, just to see what it would look like, in worst case scenario, I'll peel it off and just redo that one little uh, trim piece. And so, <clears throat> I don't know, I still got the glossifier at home, but believe it or not, this green uh, did not look like this on the computer screen when I was looking at ordering a color. Uh, as with anything else, like when you look at cars on the computer, the color of the car on the computer is not really what it looks like in real life. But it's a little darker than I wanted it to be. I kind of wanted it to be a little bit closer to the color of that 2019 Vulcanus. Um, it actually turned out a little darker than I thought. Um, it's okay. Uh, it looks pretty good. But I'm not a big fan of the dark green either. <laughs> so. That's that. So now I'm thinking about changing it again to, I don't know, maybe like a dark black cherry or like a really dark blue, like a, I don't know what they call it, like a really, really dark blue. Or I was actually thinking about making it like a brick orange color, like a burnt brick orange color. I think that would look pretty nice. But I haven't made up my mind yet. So we'll see. We'll see how it goes. Either way, uh, I love the bike and I'll talk about it more. I might make another video on this bike. In fact, I probably will. Uh, now that I got a microphone, I can actually record a uh, video with 
voice, not just uh, the other ones that I recorded where there's no microphone. I don't know why I waited so long to get this Purple Panda microphone on Amazon. I know uh, several YouTubers out there have these. And uh, like Chase on Two Wheels has them. I think Yammy Noob has them. I think. But uh, either way, for 30 bucks, you can't go wrong. Uh, the only downside is, is you know, with this uh, GoPro Hero 7s, you have to have that little adapter. But I uh, took some advice from other YouTubers and bought the adapter. And I bought the case that holds the adapter underneath the uh, camera on the front. So it works out really well. Well, this is my first time recording, so I hope there's audio. Otherwise, I just talked for no reason. But uh, let's see what this thing's made of. Yeah, I like that. That's nice. By the way, I put a Dan Moto pipe on this. And uh, I gotta say, this thing is loud as hell. Way louder than I wanted it to be. I'm, I like uh, motorcycles that have some, some sound and some grunt. And just like anybody else, a nice exhaust is always good. The problem with this Dan Moto Highwayman pipe is that it does not come with baffles. They don't, in fact, they don't even make baffles for this thing. Um, not available. Uh, not for this particular one. I know Dan Moto makes baffles for their other line of exhaust, but not the Highwayman. And unfortunately, the only exhaust you can buy for this from Dan Moto is the Highwayman. But it's loud, very loud. In fact, for me, it's a little bit too loud. Uh, I'm not a fan of the, these really, really loud motorcycles. Like you see these Harleys, and they're so loud you can't even hear yourself think. Uh, I'm not a fan of that. I know a lot of people dig it. I'm not a fan. So now I kind of wish I had known this prior or actually heard one in, in person because I probably would have not gotten it. Uh, except the fact that it was really cheap. I, I don't remember how much this exhaust was, but I want to say the full system was like maybe 200 Maybe. I don't remember exactly. Uh, but it was cheap. But I could have got another exhaust, but uh, the next cheapest one was the, I think it was the Two Brothers. And that one was, I want to say, close to 500. And then you had, you know, the top of the line aero pipes and stuff like that. But those were uh, getting upwards of, you know, $800,000 or something like that. Again, I'm not spending a quarter of the bike's price for exhaust. But the other thing I did was uh, I put this windscreen on because uh, I don't mind the wind at all. Uh, I'll talk about this later, but I don't really mind it so much. But if we go on a long trip, after a while, that wind starts uh, wearing you down a little bit. Uh, all my life, I've never had a windscreen up until a previous bike that I owned. So I, I never knew what it was like to have a windscreen. But it's kind of nice because you don't have to, especially on the interstate, you don't have to lean forward into the wind. And over a couple hours of leaning forward and fighting the wind, it kind of fatigues you, especially like your back. And I never really realized how nice it is to have a windscreen. Now this windscreen puts the wind up right about the top of my visor. So it barely skims the top of my, uh, my helmet. Now I'm 5'10", and uh, the way I sit on this bike, like I said, the wind hits the very top of my helmet, just above the face shield. So it's kind of nice. And uh, coincidentally, a lot of the bugs uh, from the wind get deflected up and it hits mostly the top of my helmet instead of square in the face, except the bigger ones that make it through the draft. Great, another turn. The other problem with this loud exhaust is, is everybody hears you, especially when you get on the gas. And uh, which is fine, because uh, a lot of people stare and look. The only downside is that so do the police. Yeah. So if there's one around and I can't see him, he will definitely hear me coming. So that's another drawback. 
Knock on wood, I have not had any uh, conversations with the police on the side of the road, so that's kind of nice. Uh, I prefer not to, but we'll see how that goes. So anyway, the windscreen is really nice. It's a Puig windscreen. It's a dark smoke. I think it looks pretty good. The factory ones that you can get from Kawasaki, you can actually buy them on Amazon and on eBay. They're $185 just for the shield. There's just the shield. And it's another like 200 bucks or something for the mounting bracket. Now we're talking a metal bracket that's bent in a certain shape. It's a piece of metal, that's it, with four screws. Why it costs $200 is beyond me. Other than absolute robbery and price gouging, I can't understand why this little bracket costs $200. If I was halfway decent with uh, metal working, I could probably make one myself. I'm just not good enough, so no experience in metal work, so that's that. So I got this Puig, and uh, I want to say it was $119, something like that on Amazon, and it works great. I love it. And I also got the Kawasaki charger, charging port where you can plug in, uh, you know, like your cell phone, whatever. Um, I got that on Revzilla. The downside to that is, is you have to get the relay kit. Uh, I don't understand why I'm not, I'm not an electrician. I don't know why, but you have to have it. It's not hard to install. It takes like 10 minutes if you're slow. And it's on the left side of the bike behind one of the covers. I'll talk about that later. It's very easy to install. It's uh, two screws and a plug. That's it. And the plug's already there, so you plug it in, put two screws in, that's it. Same thing with this. It takes a little bit more because you have to take off uh, the headlight. You have to move the headlight out of the way. And then this cover that's on the back of the speedometer, you have to take that cover off. But it's a uh, plug-in. The plugs are already there from the factory. So when you get this charger, you just plug it in. And it's a male-female connector, so you can't even screw it up. Uh, anyone with that can use a screwdriver and you know some, a wrench and some ratchets, if you can do that, you can, you can install it. Uh, it comes with the bracket. The holes are already there. You don't have to drill or anything. You don't have to modify anything. You screw it into a pre-existing hole. Kawasaki built it so that if you get the exception or the uh, exception, accessory, excuse me, if you get that accessory, all you gotta do is just put the screws in. So, and it comes with the screws, so it's uh, really, it's very, very simple. And it's great, because you can plug your phone in, like I'm about to here. If I can find a plug, there it is. So, uh, yeah. What else did I do to this bike? Uh, I think that's it can't remember anything else. Oh, I put these uh, levers on. Can't really see them right now, but uh, they're uh, some cheap Amazon levers. I think they're MZS or something like that on Amazon. Comes from China. I was a little skeptical. Uh, I thought they would not be good, but they're actually really nice. Um, they were like 30 bucks, something like that, 35. And they're really, really nice. I like it. Uh, they feel great. They fit great, very easy installation. Uh, took me about five minutes per side. Uh, so about 10, 15 minutes tops, I had both of them on. They work great. It's uh, bolt on, didn't have to do any kind of adjustment. Everything's great and they are adjustable. Uh, I'll show you them later, but uh, they work great. And then uh, other than that, I haven't done anything else to the motorcycle. Oh, and I put, I'm sorry, I did put a LED headlight bulb. It's a, I think it's an H4, I think, if I remember correctly. Uh, headlight bulb, LED. Uh, I haven't rode it at night, so I have no idea what it looks like, but it's definitely brighter during the day. Um, I noticed, too, in the garage when I turned it on, you can't really tell the difference between low beam and high beam. There's a very little difference. So one day I'm going to have to take it out at night just to see what it looks like. It might not work at all. It might throw the light everywhere. I don't know. Uh, 
Uh, it might be crap, who knows? But it's definitely brighter during the day. Uh, people can definitely see me better. In fact, last time I rode with my friend John and Dana, they made a comment about how uh, how bright, how much brighter it was. Uh, so that's good. And those uh, turn signals are the uh, factory Kawasaki halogen turn signals. They're not big and gaudy and ugly orange ones like the uh, Yamahas. So I think I might leave them. Although what I might do is I might put a um, LED light bulb in there and just replace the bulb. Uh, but you'll probably have to get one of those flasher relays uh, to keep it from hyper flashing. But other than that, uh, I think I might keep those. I looked on TST Industries because they had uh, they have those LEDs and I used theirs on my XSR 900 and that was great and they look great they're bright they're awesome uh, so I might put those on if they make make one for this I haven't looked yet uh, but if they do I might I might replace them who knows maybe we'll see how it goes but I kind of like them I don't have a problem with them they're not as ugly as the Yamahas. Yamaha and like Suzuki and some of the older Hondas, they make some really ugly turn signals. So I'm not a fan. The only other thing I had to do is I am sure if you look at one of my recent videos, uh, I think it was about a week ago I posted it. I was just out riding on the Vulcan and I noticed every time I was coming to a stop, I would hear squeaking. And uh, I realized it was only from the rear brakes for some reason the rear brakes were squeaking so I took it apart and used some sill glide some brake lube and lubed up all the slide points caliper slide points the brake pad slide points and put some on the back of the brake pads and now there's zero squeak at least I haven't heard any yet so that's kind of nice fix that problem and I was tempted to replace them with the um, uh, double H centered brake pads. I put those on my XSR 900 and they seem to have better bite and better grip. So I thought about it, but <clears throat> Revzilla was out of stock on their rears on these. So I opted not to do that right now, but at some point I probably will and do the fronts as well. Uh, surprisingly, the rear brakes on these things are really good, this motorcycle. Usually the rear brakes are crap. They don't usually work very well. On this one, surprisingly very well. Um, even with stock brake pads and everything stock, it works really well. Did not expect that from, um, from Kawasaki. Good job, Kawasaki. Um, so there was one little snafu when I did the um, plastic dip on the front fender. Now, I'll talk about that some more later, but uh, you have to take the wheel off to get the fender off. Because uh, there's a little notch in the side of the fender where the fork tubes sit. And you can't slide the fender out without taking the wheel off. You kind of have to slide it down, except the wheel is in the way. So you have to take the wheels off. A pain in the rear. Um, I had a little snafu with that, kind of messed something up. I'll talk about that next time when I redo the um, color of this bike. I'll probably video it just so everybody can see what it's like. Um, it's not a hard process. It's a very time consuming process, um, but it's not hard. It's pretty easy to do. It, it'll take you about a day. And then I did notice that even though it's dry to the touch, um, I would recommend letting the bike sit for a day or two before you start reassembling it uh, with a new plastic dip on it. So I would suggest doing that. Uh, and next time I will. But I just put it back together. I started in the morning and then later that evening I put it back together. Um, I probably won't do that again. I'll do it. Uh, I'll do it one day and then let it sit for two days and then I'll put it back together. Uh, it, it's much nicer. It's less chance of you scratching or peeling up the uh, plastic dip. Uh, it's Like I said, it's dry to the touch after a couple hours. Uh, and you can actually put it back together. Uh, it's just 
it would be very easy to scratch or peel up or damage it and then you have to go back and fix it which involves respraying it depending on how bad you scratch it you probably could just repaint that one little spot but if you peeled it up then you might have to actually peel the uh, plastic dip completely off and respray it which would be a, a royal pain just time consuming not hard time consuming so but would I do it again? Yeah, and I probably will because uh, I'm not a fan of this green. And I thought about uh, just keeping uh, a color on there for a few months and then changing it up, or maybe every riding season having a different color. It's kind of like having a new motorcycle every riding season. Uh, so yeah. Otherwise, I like it. It's not bad. Just not my favorite. So. Anyway, well, I'm on the way to my friend's house. We're going to meet up there. Supposedly, he has breakfast and coffee ready. We'll see about that. And then uh, we're off to the beach. Well, the coast. Not really the beach, but the coast. And uh, I guess I'll film something along the way. I don't know what, but I'll film something. Uh, it's not a very exciting ride, so most of it is just backcountry roads, but it's all good. But I'll fil film some of it and post it and see what people think um, and then uh, I'll do some videos coming up more on this motorcycle and then of course my XSR 900 that's a fun bike like I said I was supposed to ride that today because we're gonna go to the mountains and that's a much much nicer motorcycle to have especially in the mountains this one's okay but uh, it's no XSR 900 I can tell you that and uh, but anyway I'll make some more videos talk about this motorcycle I do have a lot to say about it and um, tell you what I like and what I don't like. There's a lot of videos out there about the specs and all that stuff. I'm not going to talk about that because you can just look it up or watch any one of the other videos on it. But uh, I'll tell you my opinion of this motorcycle. There's a lot of videos out there on the opinion of this thing. Um, but I did find that some things I don't believe is true. And I'll talk about that some other time. So stay tuned. And if you want to see uh, more about this uh, motorcycle, uh, just keep an eye out. If you want to subscribe to my channel, go ahead. I don't have a lot of videos up yet. And this is the first one with a microphone. Hopefully the audio is good. Uh, so we'll see. And then uh, we can talk about this motorcycle later. Seventy East. We're not taking the bypass. Okay. I'm good. Somebody's got their visor open. I like doing that for some reason. No, I do not. <laughs> I'm actually trying to wear these tires out to put some Pirelli Angels on it.
Do what? So this is lovely Clausen's restaurant in Beaufort, North Carolina. Beautiful lunch, a little cloudy, very windy today. A little brisk out today with the wind. So, so far, I rode about 171 miles, roughly, from the time I left home. Not too shabby. And let's see, you got 113 miles so far on this tank of gas. All right. I just had a bug explode all over my hand and it's sticky. Yeah, uh, yeah. How do you put the windshield up higher? Oh shit. Okay, well, here's John's bike. Let's see how this, whoa, dang, this clutches. Oh, this thing's got your knee all bent up like a sport bike. I can hear that bike from way over there. <laughs> Man, this thing is way different. The brakes are touchy. Wow. Wow, this thing is definitely different. Ready. Oh, shit. Oh, this thing's quick. Shit. Wow. This thing's fast. What year bike is this? Oh, 14. This is the first year with cruise control, right? Oh, nice. Wow, this thing's light. Wow. Wow, this thing's light. The uh, engine brake is not very strong on it. Yeah. Yeah, it won't lock the brakes up, but the engine brake is not very strong. That bike, uh, that Vulcan, the engine brake is strong on it. Man, this thing is nice. I might have to get one of these. <laughs> and this thing's quick. Wow, shit. This is no slouch. Man, 
man, I could cruise on this all day. <laughs> this is nice. Wow, 76 miles an hour, smooth as butter. Wow, this is nice. I wonder how much they let that 2020 FJR go for. Oh, is that rain? Wow, this is definitely nice. This thing's nice. $18,000. Well, this is just... Yeah. I could ride this. And of course it starts raining. It's hitting my face shield. You can easily speed on this and not realize it. It does not feel like I'm going 72. Uh, yeah, it'd be different. Getting on the tail of the dragon on this would definitely be different. The shifting on it is real smooth. I wonder what Joel would let that new bike go for. This is nice. Mm. 